Welcome to Evergreen Learning Spotlight. Today joining us we have some folks from the Clark County Skills Center. Let's meet them now. First we have Karen Duffy, the Assistant Director of the Skills Center, Tom Whittingham, who's a pre-engineering design technology program instructor, Cade Plessinger, who is a senior in the pre-engineering and design program and also a senior at Evergreen High School, and Pam Archer, the Fashion Merchandising and Retail Management Program Instructor. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So Carrie, I'm going to start with you. Um, a lot of people may not know actually what the Clark County Skill Center is. Can you describe the Skill Center a little bit and the programs sure. you offer there? Sure. Uh, the Skill Center is a consortium type of school. We're owned by all 10 of the local school districts. Each of them um, have a, a part, have owned a part of the Skill Center. And we have 11th and 12th graders, juniors and seniors there, that really want to focus on the technical and career skills in particular areas. We are preparatory, so that means that this isn't an, a class where they would go in and say, what are all the different things I might want to do? This is real focused in on a career area, and they, students are able to get uh, certifications, college credit, so it's, it is a, bright, a bigger breadth than a regular sending high school would have normally in a technical program. So you said it's uh, juniors and seniors. Yes. What are the prerequisites for students to attend? Uh, other than being a junior or senior, it depends on the program. Some programs will have prerequisites based on the academic needs and requirements. For instance, the pre-engineering design uh, program has some math prerequisites because there is a lot of math used in obviously in an engineering program. There are some programs that have other prerequisites like reading levels and things because we do use sometimes college level or late high school level texts. Okay. Um, although a lot of that has to do with the terminology. So what are some of the uh, programs besides engineering and fashion merchandising fashion and retail? <laughs> Uh, we have applied medical sciences, dental assisting. Those are two programs that have large numbers of students. Um, diesel technology, financial customer service. We have construction technology, um, automotive technology, criminal justice. There's, there is a total of 14 programs um, with our new program coming online in, at the Skill Center. So pretty wide variety. So what are the options for students um, once they graduate? What are their post-secondary options after they go through one of your programs? Same as anybody else, honestly. Any, uh, coming from any school, their options are uh, university, which we have happening here. We have students here going to technical colleges, to Clark College or other local community colleges. We have students that attend apprenticeships. They get a a placement and apprenticeship programs. Um, some students are going directly to work because they have certifications in almost all of our programs. They have a certification that allows them to start off Great. in their field. So. so how are the classes that are offered at the Skill Center different than say what Cade might get if he had just stayed at Evergreen? Cade would probably <laughs> speak somewhat to that. Um, but I, I would say the biggest thing is everything that they learn is then applied. So where it's not just so much um, the theory, the theory is then applied. Okay. So the students learn to um, do and use what they've what they've learned. And I would that be um, well that's that's part of it. I mean one of the biggest things for me was probably it's a, it's a lot more one on one and hands on with yeah. like uh, you know me and Mr. Whittingham like I mean two and a half hours a day for two years adds up to a lot of time right. stuff so we know each other pretty well it's working relationship and, and we have a good time in the class we it's it's you get a lot more time in the active field that you want to be so it's a class that you don't mind being there for two and a half hours because right. it's the longest class I have in the day but it feels probably like the shortest well since we started talking about you and your program why don't you tell us a little <coughs> bit about the engineering program okay the uh, program was designed mainly to uh, offer students a chance to see what engineering is about. Uh, we cover a lot of the different disciplines in engineering, so we expose the students to what engineers are, what they do, what type of uh, jobs they do. Um, we focus also on architecture. Um, we also focus on CNC machining and some of the manufacturing elements involved in engineering. 
and the whole premise of it is to try to give a student a good working feel for what it's like to be in some kind of an engineering environment. The engineering career field has a lot of different uh, jumping off points, so to speak. Uh, it not only encompasses engineers, but it encompasses uh, robotics technicians, engineering technicians, CNC machining, all kinds of things. So it's a, it's a really broad, broad area. So we have a good time with the students just exploring all those different items, all those different things. Um, I almost feel like I'm a facilitator just kind of presenting different dishes to these students and letting them just, you know, enjoy them and just kind Sample of explore the menu, them. Huh? Yeah, in a sense. Well, we have a short video of your program and we'll take a look at that now. Great. Want to be an engineer or designer? The pre-engineering and design technology program will build your skill sets with computers and sophisticated manufacturing equipment. You'll also receive hands-on training in computer-aided drafting, designing mechanical parts, and setting up and operating computer-controlled machines. Train with tutorials, lectures, labs, and hands-on projects to equip you to make career choices within the engineering field. Pick up your industry certification and high school and college credits, too. Wow, that was actually pretty interesting. Um, kind of brought into focus some of the things you had talked about with your program and the different things that, that students are able to do. Yeah. So what are some of the jobs that students may go into? I mean, it looks like just engineering, but also they're possible architecture and yeah. some of those things? Um, we, we give them a good basis on design and drafting and that kind of uh, element as well as CAD. So one of the things that students can, can do, they can enter the workforce as an entry level CAD designer or drafter. Um, we offer a certification which is kind of unique. It's a certification that's sponsored by uh, SolidWorks which is a software company. It's an industry recognized software that's pretty prevalent in the engineering realm and we offer a certification in that where students, if they pass that certification, they're recognized as a certified SolidWorks associate. And that's a certification they can take to any business that has that program and runs, runs that kind of uh, program. Uh, they're pretty much assured to getting an entry level job. And I understand now this is one of the programs the Skill Center has had for quite a while. Um, <clears throat> do you have any record of the students who've gone through the program, what they're doing now, some of the highlights, I guess, would yeah, be? Yeah, actually, uh, several of the students have come back and been on my advisory board as engineers. And typically, the course a student will take will be uh, maybe through Clark College two years, transferring to a university, and then over the course of three to four years, they'll come back as a mechanical engineer, uh, civil engineer, um, some kind of an engineering discipline. Okay. Yeah. In I know we have a young man here with us, but do you have any girls in your program? We do. <laughs> we always, uh, we always. I don't want to say struggle, but we always look forward to having young ladies in the class. They certainly change the atmosphere, especially in an all, almost all-male class. But uh, we, we do have. In fact, this year I probably have more girls than I've ever had in, in the years past. Uh, and we're always hoping that they'll tell their friends and there'll be more, more females in the class. So what do you think girls are hesitant to go into engineering? You know, I, I wish I knew. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's intimidation. I know the girls that do come in, they, they certainly uh, are young ladies that they know how to hold their own, and, and, uh, but I'm not sure, I'm not sure why they, they don't come to the, those kind of classes. So your ideal student, what, what would be the skills you would like them to have when they come in? And Well, probably the most important skill is that they're enthusiastic and they see something here that they could develop into a career. Um, once they get here, uh, I almost, in fact, I tell my students that really you're my employees and I'm going to treat, treat you that way um, and I'm your employer. So I try to foster a realm or a, a realization that um, it's not just a class, but it's, I'm trying to prepare you to enter into either a career choice, a workforce, something more than just a class. So I, I put a lot of, uh, not physical pressure, but I put a lot of pressure on them to, to perform, okay. uh, to basically um, be productive. And that's pretty prevalent throughout the whole skill center and all the programs, isn't it? It's, yeah. You know, really yeah. trying to get these students ready for ready, work. Right. And so they understand. Because they really have place. to notch it up a level. Otherwise, you get the employers that call us or call and say, you know, this guy never showed up for work or he didn't get up in time. And, and it's sad that this generation of youngster, young people is kind of, kind of looked at like that kind of generation that right. just aren't, don't show up for work on time or whatever. But so, and we have another whole element of our curriculum that's called our professionalism 
that, and we realize the importance of this. Um, if I mean, we can prepare these kids with the best skills possible, but if they don't have that, what we call soft skills or that professional side of them, where they're responsible for their their job and what they do, then we really haven't done done all we can for them. So. Right. So, kid, you've been there two years now. Yeah, it's my second year. And how long is the class each day? Uh, two and a half hours. And that's every day. So, um, how do you get there? Uh, there's a school bus. Okay, so you don't have to drive or anything. No, uh, they're pretty strict on their driving policy. So, what's the driving policy? <laughs> you don't drive. <laughs> driving policy is if you are from a district that sends a bus, you ride the bus. Okay. And the purpose of that is safety. Parking in the parking lot, whereas we have a lot of businesses on our campus, and we have a lot of um, people coming in to those businesses, and so there's not a lot of extra parking. But always number one is safety, and the superintendents council, all the superintendents from all those sending districts, run the skill center, and that was one of their their um, rules was we'll send a bus and students will be on it. All right. So, so Kay, going back, think back to your sophomore year. What made you uh, decide to? go to the skill center your junior year and how did you decide what program to go into? Well, uh, probably one of my main things for that I considered the skill center for was uh, like I had the people that came to the school and kind of presented, showed the videos. I mean, uh, they, they kind of give you a taste of what it is, but they really can't describe what it is as someone that you know that's been there. Mm -hmm. And my sister, she took the applied medical sciences program and she, uh, she went through nursing really quick, like she got her bachelor's degree at 21 and stuff so like I saw how that helped her stuff and I had an interest coming up from middle school and part of high school looking at the engineering aspects and you know taking the on the computer to in your hands on the CNC type of thing and stuff and I thought that was pretty cool so it seemed like a pretty good match for me and stuff and engineers they get paid a decent amount of money so it's a you know it's a real career that I can choose from. So, so what are your plans for next year? Uh, well, next year I, I got accepted to a four-year university at uh, Brigham Young University, Idaho. So I'll be going there and majoring in mechanical engineering. So this program has actually helped you then? Oh, definitely, yeah. Do you think you would have gone into engineering if you hadn't gone through the skill center? Um, I probably would have gotten there somehow, I would imagine, because it's still, I still have the same mindset. But I probably would have been a lot more roundabout path and stuff, because it's a it's a very direct class. So it, it hands you exactly what it is and says, take it if you want it. So if you take it, you're set. So what kind of um, classes, I guess what I'm asking is, if you had stayed at Evergreen, you would still had to take math and different things. Does this fill in for some of those math credits or different things, or are you still having to take um, your four years of math? or Yes whatever? and no. Uh, it does have some, because it counts as uh, three half credits, so okay. that's the three normal classes. And uh, it you can replace some of them with like art credit and stuff like that. But for me, it didn't apply because I knew that I was going there. So okay. I basically cleared my entire schedule and stuff. And I, I still had to take uh, online classes to fit it because it's so much time. So I have, uh, I had enough credits to graduate last year. And the other people, they can't even get that many. So it tells you what you really have to do to prepare if you want to come. That's great. So Pam, you've yes. got a new program that you're introducing at the Skills Center. I have a great Center. new program. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it's fashion merchandising and retail management. And so that encompasses taking an item that's been produced and, in essence, commercializing it and getting it ready to be sold to the public. So you get both the fashion, the art, the design side with the principles and elements of art and then you combine it with all those principles and elements of business. But you're not new to the Skill Center. I am not new to the Skill Center. I'm one of the original hires from many years back. Okay, so what have you been doing up until now? Oh, up until then, I originally was hired for a fashion marketing program and then slowly transitioned over into work-based learning and most recently have led the second year travel and hotel management in sales and management program along with handling the work-based learning program for a couple of different classes. So one of the things I've noticed with the Skill Center, most of the instructors are coming in from a career in teaching in that Correct. area. So right. um, what is your background? Then? I have 20 years in fashion and retail combined. So it stems from a degree from the University of Washington right into executive training with Macy's Corporation 
and then came back up north because Macy's wasn't here at that time. Worked for Norm Thompson Outfitters, had begun a fashion merchandising program at Clark College, also traveled throughout the United States for Vogue patterns and modeled professionally, and then have been a wholesale rep for jewelry and accessories, as well as having written a variety of sewing magazine publications and two books. So I know with the Skill Center, I mean, they don't usually have programs if there's not a need in that field. Right. So what is the need in the well, career field you're teaching? You know, from Paris to New York to Clark County, the retail industry and fashion industry is a multi-billion dollar operation. So the need is always there, but I think what's particularly peaked in the past couple years has been the resurgence of fashion that you've seen through the media, meaning Project Runway, Catwalk, these types of shows. And to see that kind of energy and enthusiasm and the young people into it and watching their progress from here's a sketch on a piece of paper to here's a garment walking down the catwalk, now how can I get it into a store? and get people excited about to develop their own line. It's just a wonderful process. So what, what are the classes gonna be that you're teaching? Oh, well, it's just that, what I said, the fashion merchandising retail management. So we're gonna start off with taking a look at the design elements and how do you begin to put a garment together? What goes into that process? What kind of colors are you using? What's your design line gonna look like? Who's your target market? Who are you trying to aim for? And then once you've developed that product, all right, what kind of standards is it meeting for actual production? And then who's your vendor going to be? And who, if you needed to outsource it, where would it go? Would you go to China? Would you go to Vietnam? Would you go to Thailand? Would you keep it here in the United States? And so there's that component with taking something right off the piece of paper. And then there's this huge market with upscaling and upcycling garments that are already been around from consignment stores or Goodwill and going in and totally restyling it. Sounds so, pretty exciting. Oh, it's thrilling. <laughs> so I know that a lot of times through the various programs you send students out on internships. Mm -hmm. So are you making those connections now? What kind of internships will they be able to go to? Uh, originally, initially we'll be taking a look at having them start in a retail environment, but that's not to limit by any means because there's a large corporation right out in Ridgefield that produces jeans that may need an intern either in production or learning to assist with a design and a designer. So there are some options out there. And of course, we've got Adidas, we've got Nike. Portland metropolitan area is such a nice little mecca and hub for all of this fashion activity. That sounds great. Sounds yeah. exciting. It is. Now, I would assume that you're probably going to have predominantly females in the class, but you still have males. They're Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, over the past few years, Carol, I've taught an intro to fashion summer school program. And occasionally we will get a male or two that is very interested in that particular occupation and career opportunity. Well, and I believe there was a young man from Vancouver who won one of those shows. Yes, he so. did. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Project Runway a couple of seasons ago. That's great. So, Karen, kind of, or Carrie, I'm sorry, wrapping back to you. Um, wide variety of programs, mm -hmm. but what are some of the similarities with the various programs that the Skill Center is offering? The biggest similarity is our soft skills, our professionalism skills. You can walk into any program and you are going to get that type of an employee, that type of skill in those students, no matter what program you're, you're walking into. That's really been um, the culture of our school and that's really been the focus in general because that's what our advisory boards tell us that students need the work ethic the soft skills to be able to work together as a team to be collaborative pro solve problems and our kids can do that so we spend a lot of time approximately 20 to 25 percent of our time with students is around developing those skills what happens if you have a student who isn't developing the skills or wants to goof off or play around. And, and it happens all the time. <laughs> and because um, there's, there's students still. I mean, they're, they're high school students and we understand that. We, I think what, what we do that's different because it is hands-on, because it's so applied, um, we have less issue with that. Um, and it's fun. 
And I think the students really have a, a good time with that. But we work with them. It is, it's, a, it's constant. It's constant work. And students, we have standards that we want them to meet. But the reality is, is everybody's an individual. And we meet them where they are. And we help grow them as best we can towards the standard that we're trying to um, get to at the end of that school year. And I think Kate alluded to it a little bit when he said that, you know, we've got two and a half hours together. Yeah. And yeah. we as instructors really do form a relationship with our kids. Um, we take an interest in what they're doing, where they're going. Um, and I'm not saying that, that other teachers don't, but we've got the time to do that, which is really important. Um, I know coming from conventional high schools, you know, you see so many kids and you just, they come in and go out and come in and go out. But we get a chance to really spend some time and, and, and understand them. How many students attend the school center? Right now around a, just over a thousand, thousand fifty. But they're not all there at the same time. No, they're there. We have three sessions. The majority of our students though are, in, are within two sessions. Um, they're two, two and a half hour periods, first, second, and third period, or fourth, fifth, and sixth. We do have a session three, which is after school, and we have just the dental and applied medical science. There's such a need in the community for those positions, and there's a need um, that we have to be able to fill extra extra places in that school, those programs. So, Now, well, I've been to the school center quite mm -hmm. a few times, and I've had the pleasure and opportunity to have meals there. Oh, yes. And I think that's something a lot of people don't know is that they can actually come in and there's a restaurant there. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Touch of Class. Touch of Class is the restaurant that's run by our Restaurant Management and Colony Arts program. They are open three days a week for breakfast and lunch. Uh, we also have five dinners, themed dinners a year that you can come um, in the evening and they have these fantastic five, four and five course meals that the students prepare. It's a student-run restaurant and, um, and kitchen. So students are doing everything with the guidance of the chef and Mr. Retchels who runs the front of the house. It is an ACF, or American Culinary Federation, um, certified program, uh, received highest honors last year for their recertification in the United States. So it's an outstanding program for us. And it's, we have other businesses. We have um, the dental clinic on campus. We also have a bank on campus at IQ Credit Union. We have the um, automotive area that they, people can bring cars in if they want um, to have them worked on. Cosmetology, um, there's, that they, people can make appointments. That is our program, but off campus. Uh, we also have in construction technology, our second year construction students build a house. And the first year students build sheds. So there's, there's lots of businesses on our campus. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned several of those. So with the credit union, mm -hmm. if I wanted to come in and do my banking there, I could. And yes, absolutely. So get my oil changed in my car. Yep. And <laughs> well, we can do it. All right. Yeah. One stop shop. And you, will you be giving fashion advice next year for folks who want to come in? Or? I wouldn't say no to that by any means we because, again, in other <laughs> occupational or career areas, a student could become a fashion stylist as well. So you think of them just entering sales. No, there's just way more, way more to that, all of that. And what we've found over the past years is when the students go through the program, they just move up the ranks so much faster and are placed into management ever so more quickly than they're their counterparts that don't have the experience or the background to it. So you combine those technical skills with those soft skills and you've got one highly capable, very qualified applicant. So Cade, from a student perspective, what would you tell students who are maybe thinking about going to the Skill Center? Um, uh, first of all, if you're thinking about it, clear your schedule because that's probably one of the biggest things because a lot of people, they come for the first year and the first year it's, it's like I learned a lot but the second year is what really like emplaces it like firmly into like because I didn't get my internship, I didn't get a certification, I didn't get as much time on the CNC machines that first year. So, so that, that was more of just the overall basics and the second year really refines it. So if you can, I'd say first of all clear your schedule so you can go both years. And uh, make sure that it's not just a, oh, hey, I'll give it a shot, I don't really know what the program is. Make sure you do your research, you know what you're, you know what you're getting in into because if it's something that you want to do then you're going to enjoy it and it's going to push you further ahead because I know most kids my age 
don't have a clue what they're doing. They're just saying they're going to go to college and get some degree in something, but they don't know what. So with me, you can ask me pretty much any question. I know exactly what I'm doing. And that's pretty typical of the students at the Skill Center. They seem to know where, they, where they're headed and what they want to do. Um, how does a student go about registering at the Skill Center? They would go back to their sending high school, and you would want to get um, an appointment with your counselor and fill out an application for the Skills Center, let your counselor know. You forecast that in the system, just like you would for all your other courses. And then they do a, a registration process at the Skills Center with all the counselors. And then they'll be able to, to be um, enrolled if, as long as the, there's enough space. Um, that is for the first year students who want first year, second year students have a different process that we go through with them because they're already with they're returning, us. Because they're right? Sure. So, I just want to touch back on something you said earlier. It's all the high schools in Clark mm -hmm. County have students that can come to the Skill Center. Right. And if somebody who owned a business perked up their ears at some of the things you guys were talking about and thought, mm -hmm. wow, I could use an intern, who do they contact? You are welcome to contact me. I can get you in contact with anybody. Um, if you call the Skill Center, call 604-1050 and ask for Carrie Duffy, and I would be happy to get them in touch with the right teacher, uh, the right program, and see what we can do. And does the Skill Center have a website that people could go to to find we out do. more? We do, www.ccskillscenter.com. Okay, I want to repeat that one in just one more time. <laughs> www.ccskillscenter.com. Great, anything anybody wants to add to that? Well, Thank you for taking your time and visiting with me today, and I hope you uh, have a great rest of the year, and good luck next year when you go out to BYU. Thank you. Thank you. This program is being provided by the 15 members of the Vancouver Educational Telecommunications Consortium, TV Etc.